Here you go. Remember this asshole? So um, on on his Rumble show, uh, or well, I guess his Rumble channel, he posts this clip of him on Tucker Carlson's Matt Gates saying, I'm, I'm not sorry for refusing to stand and clap for Zelensky. And his argument is this is too, this is all North Korean. Well, first of all, in North Korea, if you don't stand, you die. The fact that he was able to sit at all proves that's not true. It's, it's the same Jimmy Dore shit where like America sucks. I'm not going anywhere and I'm never going to learn another language and I'm never going to live outside the United States because it's fucking sweet here. I got a million dollar plus house in the Hollywood Hills. I yeah. assure you that Ukrainian soldiers can perfectly operate American tanks mm -hmm. and planes themselves. Mm -hmm. Thank you for both financial packages you have already provided us with and the ones you may be willing to decide on. Your money is not charity. It's an investment in the global security and democracy that we handle in the most responsible way. <laughs> By the way, I don't know why the fuck this guy is laughing. Uh, Tucker Carlson doesn't speak another language either. So... It's probably just his, you know, he, he's got to react this way because it, it assumes to his viewer that that must be absurd. This is a, this is a trigger laugh. <laughs> We're handling your money in the most responsible way. Take our word for it. Take our word for it. <laughs> well, they are winning against the allegedly the number two, and I think that is a good moniker for it, uh, army in the world. And they're a much smaller country. So they're, the, the, the weaponry... And the money is actually being spent on the battlefield. And if it isn't, if they're, if, they, if they're kicking Russia's ass like this, and they're still able to put the money away, what? It, it, then it's a tip. Cool. Good job. They love. And they clap like seals. But here's the interesting thing. Almost every person. The clap for Zelensky. Clap for him now. In quotes, as if anybody fucking said that. Nobody said that. Room clapped like a seal. So no matter what that man said, send me more money, I command you, send me more money. We're Which he didn't say. Taking care of it the most responsible ways. Yeah, there's a huge difference between send me more money, I, in I insist, or I command you, and I will use your money responsibly. Not that this dumbass gives a shit. They applaud. All of them. Right. Because this is real life. Something that Tucker Carlson has never been exposed to. Almost like they have to. No, they don't. As a matter of fact, uh, Matt Gates and Lauren Boebert didn't, and, and nothing happened to them. They just got called assholes, because they are. Now, there are 435 members of the House of Representatives, and they're Republicans and Democrats. And famously, they don't get along, and they don't agree on anything. No, they agree on a lot of things, actually. They can't even pass a budget, because they disagree on... They just passed a budget. Everything. They just passed a budget. Very bitterly. Mm, no, I mean, obviously the Matt Gates crowd is very, is pissed that a budget was passed at all because it's actual legislation, actual work, and that's something they're not interested in. And yet when a foreign leader shows up in cargo pants to tell them lies and give them orders, n neither of which happened, they all applaud. That's pretty weird behavior in a democracy if you think about it. The fractious debate we hear so much about doesn't exist. Well, about the majority of the people in Matt Gates's district who actually support supporting the Ukrainians, uh, the Ukrainians in the war against Russia. That's a material fact. As their representative, arguably, shouldn't he stand up and clap if he represents the majority of voice voices in his district? Nah, fuck that. And in fact, looking at the screen last night, it didn't really look like a democracy, to be honest. It, lo it looked like North Korea. <laughs> looked like this. <laughs> Yeah, just grab anything where everybody claps in unison and it's the, the, the same. Content doesn't matter. It's the activity that matters. If you engaged in the activity, it doesn't matter what the ethical basis of it is. It's just linear. Yeah, I, I'm not... I'm not seeing the whole place clapping at once. There just seems to be the people sitting behind him that are clapping. Oh, yes, good point. Good point, sir. We're so pleased you're here. Whoa.
try harder, dude. Throw your foreign flag on the dais and we'll blood more. That's honestly what it looked like last night. You no, it didn't. Um, you, you have an askew version, uh, like a view of reality because you're a pampered rich asshole. You gotta clap, you can get in trouble if you don't clap. No, no, you, you don't get in trouble at all. You might be called an asshole because you are, but nothing will happen to you materially. Nothing. Which is very different from the clip you just showed. So everyone just claps all the time. No, they don't just clap, they actually feel that way. Clapping is mandatory as long No, it isn't. Uh, if you had a single person who didn't do it, it wasn't mandatory. As long as Zelensky's speaking. Now, there were a few who didn't obey. Right, and there's where your argument dies. Bay, that would include Matt Gates of Florida, Lauren Boebert of- Yeah, well, I mean, he would have clapped if Zelensky had stood up there and said, uh, some of your money is being used to transport 17-year-old girls under the influence of ecstasy across state lines. He might have been the only person that clapped. Um, Colorado. And when they didn't stand up and applaud, they found out the hard way what happens to people who dare not to applaud. They, they get called assholes. NBC News went took off right after them. That was it went took off the headline for NBC. It's house historic. Congressman criticized for not fawning is what the this is what this says right here. Historian Michael Beschloss declared this quote for any members of Congress who refuse to clap for Zelensky. We need to know from them exactly why. We right. Why? What's wrong with that? Is it, is it an informed democracy part of the point? I mean, if they're not doing it, if they're doing something specifically to stand out as a point of protest, exam you know, then shouldn't they be forthcoming about why? Especially when it's, you're dealing with uh, Russia, which was one of our, you know, biggest foes on the planet. We need to know why. You don't need to know why. We might want to know why. You don't need to know why. We, you know, it's, I think your viewers might be interested to know why in particular you throw yourself in front of Russia's bus all the time. But we kind of don't give a shit. Ooh, thought crime alert. You've been reported as not applauding. Explain yourself, plebe. Plebe? They're sitting Congress people. He's a private citizen. And then Beschloss went on television to drive home the point. Our sources have reported you are not clapping. Watch this. And I think the other thing I'd like to ask is the number of members. You'd like to ask? What kind of North Korean shit is this, Michael Beschloss? Members of Congress. Uh, almost all Republican who did not show up tonight or who showed up and refused to clap. I'd like to know why that was for two reasons. Number one, you're a public servant. We're, we're allowed to know those things. You yes, plebe. How dare you? <laughs> like, uh, again, does, does every clip Tucker Carlson play undermine his argument? Is that how that show is built? You're supposed to tell us if you're serving in Congress what the reason was, you know. Yeah, Tucker Carlson doesn't think so. You have to understand, these people are in positions of power. You're a private citizen. You don't have the right to know these things. You don't even have the right to ask, according to Tucker Carlson. Do you love Putin, or are you just opposed to democracy, or is there something else? The other day, Lindsey Graham came out, the Republican from South Carolina. That's supposed to make you uh, feel like he's not a Republican, even though this dude has given Trump more taint hickeys than any other member of the Senate. And so that he, and uh, you don't feel bad, Ron Johnson, you're a close second. He agreed with Joe Biden and Zelensky. The real goal is not to move Russian troops out of Ukraine back to pre-February borders. The real goal is regime change in Russia. Watch this. How did this war end? When Russia breaks and they take Putin out, anything short of that, the war is gonna continue. To ask the Ukrainians to give Russia part of their country after all this death and destruction is not gonna happen. To signal a ceasefire, Russia will take the opportunity to rearm and come at him again. So we're in this is, by the way, Lindsey Graham's broken clock moment. In it to win it, and the only way you're going to win it is to break the Russian military and have somebody in Russia take Putin out. So it's it's really hard to overstate how crazy this is, and you don't. And by the way, he's not saying we do it. He's not saying you know we send in a sniper to do it. He's saying. The people around Putin who eventually come to their senses and get rid of this asshole, which, by the way, is a conversation that happens all around Tucker Carlson at Fox News headquarters all the fucking time. He's just against it. You don't want to play shrink and wonder about 
you know, what emptiness at the core of Lindsey Graham's personal life causes him to identify so strongly with a country he's not a citizen of? Well, uh, th then why wouldn't you ask Matt Gates and Lauren Boebert why they feel so strongly to, uh, to identify with th the Russian desire in this particular war? Why do they identify with the attacking force in this situation more so than Ukraine? Even just to have respect for the person that is there representing this country that is fighting back against an overwhelmingly larger force. Notice how he, he wants to somehow dig around in Lindsey Graham, figure out why the fuck he gives a shit about Ukraine, but he's not interested in why Gates and Boebert will throw themselves in front of that bus because he does it all the time himself. And since he's a hollowed out, empty shell of a human being, then it's just camaraderie, I suppose. He just sees it in them. Something's going on there. You think? But the Yes, maybe something's going on in you. A fact is incredibly reckless and crazy. Take out Putin. Putin's bad. Kill him. No, no, no. He's saying until somebody inside Russia takes him out. He's not saying we do it. And, and I don't think... Notice how it says, look at this, look at this Chiron. It says, oh, I'll move it up here. Hold on one second. Um, let's look right here. Have somebody in Russia take Putin out. Yeah, that's not what he said. We all just watched what he said. Now, if he said it somewhere else, play that fucking clip. He's saying somebody in Russia, like this will probably end when somebody else decides they've had enough of this asshole's bullshit and takes him out. Not us, though. But it's interesting that this is the quote, and it's in quotes. This is a lie. This is a specific manipulation of what we just watched. This is propaganda. That's that's how you would describe it. Let's just listen to it again. Hold on one second. Here you go. How did this war end? When Russia breaks and they take Putin out. Anything short of that. The when Russia breaks and they take Putin Putin out. War is going to continue. To ask the Ukrainians to give Russia part of their country after all this death and destruction is not going to happen. To signal a ceasefire, Russia will take the opportunity to rearm and come at them again. By the way, you remember when Lindsey Graham and everybody, all the right wingers were very happy to criticize the fact that Russia took Crimea during the Obama administration, and if somebody as strong as Trump had been there, that never would have fucking happened. But now, once Trump gets in there, like, let him have it. It's theirs. What the fuck is the difference? So we're in it to win it, and the only way you're going to win it is to break the Russian military and have somebody in Russia take Putin out. Have somebody in Russia take Putin out. So it's, it's really hard to overstate how crazy this is, and you don't want to play shrink and... Break the Russian military. Wonder about, you know... Yeah. So he's, that's, that's the tail end of that. But uh, uh, again, this is the act, this is the, the Russians doing this themselves. What emptiness at the core of Lindsey Graham's personal life causes him to identify so strong? That's a slam on him being, you know, a gay confirmed bachelor. And that's, I don't know, when he, when he sucks up to Trump, it's fine. But when he doesn't suck up to Putin, it's wrong. With a country he's not a citizen of. Something's going on there. But the yeah, it, by the way, I guess Tucker Carlson doesn't give a rat fuck about any country he's not a citizen of. Well, then why do you have to go to Hungary and give a speech down there? Huh. A fact is incredibly reckless and crazy. Take out Putin. Putin's bad. Kill him. Fine. What happens then? Well, the world's largest landmass falls into ungovernable chaos. And that country has the world's largest nuclear arsenal. What happens to all those weapons? Um, well, they didn't. A, a large portion of them are dysfunctional, and it would be certainly easier for the rest of the world to move in and get rid of them. In a country with and not let them keep them like they did in the nineties. A lot of people who hate us. Lindsey Graham has no idea. He doesn't care. He's not interested. So the the again, this is the inversion of mutual assured destruction. Um, loose nukes, which don't work are more dangerous than nukes that this asshole might actually use during them, you know, and they currently are, again, threatening Warsaw, threatening Berlin, threat threatening London, threatening Washington, D.C., openly on the air, and playing clips of him while they do it. He's not going to be here to find out. What the fuck does that mean? Is he going to be dead in a year? And none <coughs> of the lawmakers who clapped yesterday had any idea either. They're clapping for regime change. They're clapping for an uncertain and incredibly dangerous future. It's not getting the Russian military out of Ukraine. It's much more than that. And they don't want to know more. 
And you know what they don't care about? You. No, they don't care about you. They do not care about you at all. That's, that's why they didn't pass an infrastructure bill. And that's why we're still in Afghanistan. And we're, oh. Your health care, your southern border. Your health care? Your health care? The fuck? You work at Fox News. You guys pathologically don't give a shit about Americans' health care. What he means is Ivor fucking Mecton. Your children, your schools, your country, they don't care. Well, then why did they pass a budget that funds the Department of Education? And again, why, why would they pass an infrastructure bill that gets rid of lead pipes? Why would they expand rural broadband? Why they would, what, like, what are you talking about? Matt Gates is one of the very few members of Congress who's ever dosed a girl and taken her across state lines with a buddy of his who's pled guilty to sex trafficking, allegedly. As noted earlier, who didn't, <laughs> oh my God. Um, somewhere, a, a big boy is missing their statue. We follow the rules and stand up and applaud like a seal as the foreign leader in a sweatshirt lectured our country. He joins us now to explain his thought crime. Matt Gates, thanks so much for- His thought crime? What? So I guess you can't go to Alex Jones's show anymore. You can't do that. We're coming on. How did you, now, I'm gonna- How did you, uh, actually leave the house looking like that? You know what? I'm just gonna channel Michael Bachelot here. First of all, how dare you? Okay? When a foreign- yeah, he didn't actually say that. Dictator shows up in the Congress on your knees. He's not a dictator. He's an elected president. Okay, that's what Americans do. Mm, no, as a matter of fact, that is the opposite of being on your knees. They were all standing. <laughs> they kind of... Second, I'm going to ask you, how much do you love Putin that you didn't applaud last night? <laughs> well, let's start with Lindsey Graham. Lindsey Graham... No, let's start with why you won't answer the question about how much you love Putin. Graham has no problem sending $100 billion dollars to Ukraine so that we can weigh in on which guy in a sweatsuit gets to rule Crimea. I mean, I feel no compunction to go out and applaud some foreign leader from a historically corrupt country. Historically corrupt. You mean when the Russians were running it? Who is begging for more than the hundred billion dollars that the Congress is already set to send them. Now, when President Trump said that America would never be a socialist country, you saw Democrats. By the way, uh, the, the speech worked and the budget passed and it worked. It's functional sit on their hands. But when we say you shouldn't send endless amounts of money to this place where we are exacerbating death and conflict. How are we exacerbating death? Oh, I see. Yeah, we're exacerbating death and conflict because uh, some of the Russians are getting killed while they're killing civilians. And it, there would be fewer deaths if the Russians were just allowed to go ahead and kill all the civilians in Ukraine. I see. Yeah, this is a, there's unnecessary deaths in Ukraine of Russian soldiers. It's like we're traitors to the movement because Lauren Boebert and I didn't stand up in some sort of North Korea style performance. And it really makes you wonder, what was all of this for? Uh, standing in unity with a country that's been attacked. That's what it's for. In its performative nature, it is not only in support of what's being said, which you would uh, in theory agree with if you love democracy, but also to show the uh, dictatorial leaders of the world, like Vladimir Putin, like Xi Jinping, like the the Iranian mullahs who are supporting the Russian attack on Ukraine. Fuck you. It's a it's a middle finger to Russia, and that's why these two didn't stand. That's why Lauren Boebert and Matt Gates didn't stand. I think that Mitch McConnell and Nancy Pelosi wanted to bring Zelensky there to the Congress to provide air cover for an otherwise totally indefensible spending bill. And you could see why Zelensky was in for the grift. He's got a lot riding on it. $12.9 billion in this bill to prop up the Ukrainian economy. $300 million. Yeah, because without that, the grain supply stops and millions of people in Africa die, for example, which is, again, another reason why Tucker Carlson and Matt Gates wouldn't give a rat fuck. As a matter of fact, that's a, you know, of the Russian-Ukrainian war, I would argue they would think that the deaths of hundreds of thousands of Africans would be a feature, not a bug. For Ukrainian agriculture, another 300 million. Yeah, uh, CSL, we need to stop defending an emerging democracy and let it die at the hands of the country that wants to destroy us and all democracies. Yeah, brilliant. I agree. For Ukrainian border <coughs> patrol, and in the same bill, we are tying the hands of our own border patrol. No, we're not. 
No, we're not. This is, they, they, they've they been pushing this lie a bunch. There was extra money put in specifically to deal with asylum seekers and process them. And that processing money wasn't supposed to be spent on gear. They've got money allocated for gear and in DHS and all this other stuff. They lie and pretend that like, because you can't take this money and pilfer it and turn it into a slush fund for whatever the fuck Greg Abbott wants to spend it on, that there there isn't funding for the other stuff. This is just nonsense. Control. So Ukraine gets economic development, agriculture, border patrol, and we get racial equity mandates for us here at home. So Washington actually. Yeah, there's $1.85 trillion worth of racial equity mandates in the budget. Thinks that they should go to great lengths to keep Ukraine whole, while at the same time funding the balkanization and division within our own country. And I'm not sorry that Lauren Boebert. The balkanization and division in our country. So what the is there something in the omnibus that breaks the South off or separates Florida as a man? And I won't stand for it. Well, you won't you don't stand for anything. No. And by the way, no, no, no. I have much more respect for Maxine Waters, who I don't like and vehemently disagree with because she's a fellow American. We're both citizens. We both grew up here. This guy has nothing to do with our country. Nothing to do with our country. Get what he can. I Again, this is the guy who was like sucking up to the Hungarian leadership. Get it. I'm not even mad at him. I'm mad at the people who instinctively bow before some uppity foreigner. Uppity foreigner. Jesus Christ. Is like, I don't remember a response. And maybe he did. I don't remember a response uh, to like Trump sucking up to Putin or Kim Jong-un and him going, I don't understand why he wants to shake hands with Kim Jong-un because he thinks he could threaten blowing up Japan and that'll make us come over and kneel down in front of him and eat snacks with him. Demanding money that we don't have and they we do have should be absolutely ashamed and anyone who criticized you for acting like an American should be doubly ashamed in that. No, I'm, I, I think the, the question is, um, I don't think anybody questions that he's acting like an American. Uh, the question is, is why he thinks that's how you act as an American. The other thing is, is I'll, I will say the video is coming to a close. This clip, as they put it online, I did not excise this from the program. I did not take this and go, this will this will make him look bad. I'll shave this piece off or or shave off a top, you know, piece at the top that makes the argument that they're putting forward look wonky. Um, they're cutting this off. There's 10 seconds left. I'm guessing, or 14 seconds. I'm guessing that there's not, in the next 14 seconds, he doesn't explain that he does not support Vladimir Putin. Do you think that comes out? That means you, Michael Beschloss, you crave Well, freedom. Tucker, at least we found a flag the Democrats were willing to stand for on the floor of the United <laughs> States Congress. That exactly. was a revealing moment. Exactly. They did give him an American flag, by the way. Exactly. I appreciate your coming on. Congressman Matt Gates of Florida. Thank you. Yep. Okay. That was the end of the entire segment. That was... Did he ever answer the thing about how he feels about Vladimir Putin? No. He just came on, attacked Zelensky, said it was basically un-American to support their fight for freedom. Um, and even, even when Tucker Carlson jokingly put that question to him about why you support Vladimir Putin, he didn't even entertain giving an answer. Why is that? Why, why, why wouldn't you... You don't think it's, well, I mean, obviously you can't because it will, the reason you don't stand in those situations is because there's some level of marching orders going on, either from your own clique or a specific slice of your donors or a specific slice of your followers or your, or your own allegiances on a, on a moral and ethical level where you actually think Putin is right in this. And, and in all of those situations, as a representative of a district in Florida that majority supports the war in Ukraine, um, he is particular, like if he answers honestly, he's fucked. But con this will continue. Let me, um, and I, I wanted to show you something else, if I may. Um, so <clears throat> the other site um, that I... I'm gonna have to find this guy. Here you go. So the guy who wrote the piece that um, that Scott Ritter forwarded, for example, in this, um, he, I mean, like I said, he's very angry 
that, uh, yeah, here it is. He's very, this dude is very upset that, um, that the Russian military isn't living up to its promise. And I mean, carpet bombing all of Ukraine and murdering every civilian and wiping them out from the face of the earth. But one of the things he, there's almost like a quiet part out loud moment that he also has, which is from this little piece right here. This is for adepts of the quote, U.S. loss to goat herders in Afghanistan. U.S. would not have been able to provide the amount and uh, the same amount of assistance to Kiev if it had not decided to withdraw from Afghanistan. That's a quote from Anthony Blinken or the, a summary of what he said. P.S. The real purpose of withdrawal for Afghanistan was known long before, though, which is, by the way, this is uh, this is this Russian dude saying that basically that the the reason the U.S. finally got out of Afghanistan and why arguably Trump didn't allow us to get out while he was president was because it would give us the ability to push back against Russia's um, intentions to expand all across Europe. That if we were spending a hundred million dollars a fucking day, billions of dollars a year in Afghanistan, we wouldn't be able to support uh, them. We would have the material like our the gear, some of the gear that we're actually giving to Ukraine to use was in Afghanistan in active use. Now, Trump wants everybody to think we left that shit there. It's not there. It's in Ukraine. But it's interesting that this dude is putting this kind of post in there and, and going, all these folks who think that the Americans just, you know, it was the most embarrassing moment in American history, then it was terrible, and we got run out, and our, our soldiers surrendered to guys with knives. That shit that Trump's been pushing the whole time. There are pro-Russian, you know, military-minded vloggers who are pissed at people who still buy that bullshit because it is biting them in the ass. If we'd have stayed in, in Afghanistan, we would not have had the material ability to help in Ukraine as much as we did because the very gear that we were giving them would have been stuck there. Now, Trump wants people, like, again, Trump wants people to believe that it's still there and it ain't. It's in Ukraine. A lot of it is in Ukraine being used well. Um, I just thought it was fascinating that that dude in particular who, you know, is shitting all over this, uh, the Scott Ritter idea that, they, you know, Ukraine's going to lose. They're just going to lose. It's already, for, it's a fait accompli. It's a waste of time. And America's uh, dollar's going to crash because of the hundred billion dollars that we're giving to Ukraine that will be paid back and is used largely through lend -lease. That's going to ruin the fucking American economy. Dude, if crypto didn't do it, which was somewhere in the order of like $3 trillion of debt of, of destroyed wealth in the last seven months, $100 billion to a democracy isn't going to do it. Jesus. Jesus.